Didn't have a lot of friends in high school. But music was my friend. So I used to write stupid little songs uh, for people like me. Like, um, where are all my beta males at? It's more of an alpha male question to ask people to shout in public. But I love, you know, like, fun songs from the 80s, like Devo and, like, Flock of Seagulls. You know? uh, so this is one. I'm a beta male, beta male, I can't look you in the eyes. I'm a beta male, beta male, sure take them, but that was my last try. I'm not a leading male, I'm the best friend, I'll help you score a harder girl. And I'll have awkward sex with her nice friend, I live to live in your world <laughs> When I was a teen I wanted people to like me Invite me to their Friday night party But no one ever did So I stayed at home Didn't grow a backbone And I watched TGIF alone I'm a beta male Named Avery And type it with a lowercase font Beta male Did you like that? Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much. For my closing number, uh, I do like to write songs, and I think the best part about writing songs is that it can make you feel better, and I want to give you guys a gift tonight, and there's a little bit of a sing-along here. Will you guys join along when the time comes? Will you join along and have a good time with me? All right. Uh, so I just went to the doctor and got some interesting news, and we're going to sing about it. Cool? I always used to ask for an extra squeeze of mayo on my deep fried macaroni and cheese. I love food so much, my sweat is gravy. I'm the kind of guy that's going to lose his feet. Cause I got diabetes, you got diabetes My Jews got diabetes, Babe Ruth had diabetes Top one, diabetes, it's fun Diabetes, top two, diabetes Do you know the part you're gonna sing along to? I had to make a change cause I had a kid Now everything I eat is fucking solid Kale, quinoa, spinach, broccoli and red beets Dehydrated apricots are my only treat Cause I got, come on you got My Jews got, Babe Ruth had Top one, it's fun Top two, diabetes Tom Hanks shouldn't have had chocolate during Forrest Gump. Ben Carson diagnoses diabetic Donald Trump. Fake news, who knows, who cares? So for all of you who think this is the end of my act, stay tuned for my next song called Heart Attack. Cause I got, you got, my Jews got, Babe Ruth and Top One. It's fun. Top Two Diabetes. Thank you so much, Hollywood. Great. Um, I'm happily married to such a babe, and we have a pretty good sex life. But he tried something a little different the other night. Um, he was, you know, down there, and all of a sudden I felt this. You guys, he literally blew on my hoo-ha. <laughs> Here's the thing. We've been together for 10 years, so when he tries new things in the bedroom, it lets me know he's been watching porn. <laughs> right? Where else did he learn that from? I know men, you guys aren't standing around like, hey, so you know what you should do? You know what she'll like? Blow on it. Just a little. 
blow on it. <laughs> and clearly this is a room full of porn lovers. <laughs> I'm not so much a fan. 10 years ago, I asked my husband not to watch porn. And I like to just pretend that he kept that agreement, you know? But when he blows them a hoo-ha, he gives himself away. <laughs> you guys, I ran that joke by my mom to make sure that it wasn't too um, crass. And she didn't get it. <laughs> I had, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I had to explain it to my mom. <laughs> so if we weren't close before, we are now. Talking about getting old, you know, I got carded in Vegas recently. <laughs> not that funny um, people are like ah, ha, ha, she got guarded um, no it was the sitting at a blackjack table and the pit boss asked me for my ID and I was like oh okay <laughs> so I gave it to him and he looks at it and he looks at me and he looks at it and he's like come on this can't be right I said it is I'm older than I look and he goes yeah, but 103 pounds? <laughs> I was like, doesn't everyone lie on their driver's license? Wait, he goes, well, within reason, ma'am. I mean, this is, hey! It was the Venetian Hotel. They're so honest there. I went into the bathroom at the Venetian. It's a fancy bathroom. They have a fancy bathroom attendant. And she was standing there with like a tray of like gum and cigarettes and perfume. And, and I walked in and she was like, hello. And I was like, hi. And so I go to the bathroom, come out of the stall. And right away she like hands me a paper towel. She's like. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Right away I felt obligated to wash my hands. <laughs> I'll do this because you're here get out there and gamble. I'm a compulsive gambler. And uh, I was at the blackjack table and I'm sitting there and this guy sits down next to me. He's really cute. And I was like, you know what? I've been in a relationship for seven years. I'm in Vegas. Why not flirt, you know? Like, why not get some attention? And I was like flirting with him and he was not, not having it. <laughs> and then out of the blue, he goes, yeah, I haven't had sex with a woman in five years. And I was like, oh great, just my luck. He's married. What is this, this, new, this new trend now? You just see these old people tethered to the machine by that bungee cord player card thing? What the hell is that? It's like you're tying up an old dog outside a house or something. Here, Nana, here's some nickels. We're gonna plug you in. Don't roll away. We'll be back after the comedy show. They can have a heart attack and die and you wouldn't know it, because that bungee cord will keep holding them up in the chair the whole time. Play nickel slots. Good Lord. They have penny slots. Have you seen that? Yeah, you know what's worse than playing penny slots? Watching somebody play penny slots. Yeah, you getting all caught up in the action. Oh, my God. That guy's down like $3. How long's he been playing? Four hours. He's a grinder. Grinding it out. Ah, but welcome to the, the Tropicana, too. One of the nicer hotels and casinos on the Strip. That's the big trend in Las Vegas, people. Get rid of the decrepit old hotels and casinos and then build up those big, huge, fancy, new, you know, like the win which that's the wrong name for a casino. They left never off the front of that son of a bitch. <laughs> Lost there. The Bellagio, you been through the Bellagio? It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, but you get the feeling though when you walk through the Bellagio, they have a different target clientele. You know, it doesn't, doesn't feel like they're looking for the rich, the famous, the tuxedo wearing James Bond gambler. And that's great if that's their target, you know? But the best thing about the Bellagio is they can't keep out the riffraff. <laughs> so there's nothing better than walking through the Bellagio and seeing that guy with the NASCAR hat and the Hooters t-shirt. He's got that three-foot margarita with the big-ass straw. Yeah. Walking around like this. 
man, this Bellagio's nice. Woo, doggy. It's like the Clampets go gambling. It's awesome. That's right, Bellagio. <laughs> and the three-foot margarita. Do you need that? Yeah, when your beverage has a shoulder strap, you got a 12-step program in your future there, Otis. Family roles are just weird. Like, you're, you're just set in stone what you were when you were little, you know? And so, like, my family just thinks of me as this, like, 12-year-old, lazy, bratty kid. And I'm like, wow, okay, I guess we're really not gonna give me any credit for anything I did in the past life. Cool. Because <laughs> I, uh, I did a past life regression. In my very last life, I was a Somalian soldier. And I died a hero, yes. So I'm still kind of shy about it, but some respect would be nice. <laughs> The weirdest past life regression I've ever done, I know, relatable, <laughs> um, was, with, was with a pet psychic. And I took my cat to a pet psychic and she was like, Megan, your suspicions were correct. You were in a past life with your cat. I was like, oh my God, what are the odds? She was like, yep, you guys were a married couple. You lived on a tugboat and he was emotionally abusive to you. I'm serious. I was like, mm, I don't think I lived on a tugboat, but okay. Maybe I like rode on one and like honked the horn to be funny or something. I don't know, just in, <laughs> just in case she's right, like every night before I go to sleep, I just whisper to my cat, I know what you did on the tugboat, and then I hit him. He called me fat in a tugboat in the 70s. Fuck him. Um, I'm from Kansas. I moved out to LA to be a writer. And whenever I tell people that, they're like, ooh, anything I've ever heard of? And I'm like, no, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Living in LA is crazy um, for many reasons. The first guy I dated when I moved out here was addicted to meth. And I had no idea. I just thought he was super passionate about cleaning. I was like, you go, baby. Yes. I came home early once from vacation to surprise him. I bet you can guess what I found. Um, he was making 200 pieces of toast for an imaginary party in his mind. Yeah, tale as old as time. Um, I'm, I want to get better at relationships, though, so I just took a tantric sex course. I highly recommend it. The teacher was like, Megan, are you crazy in bed? And I was like, well, bed is where I do most of my 9-11 conspiracy theory research, so sure. <laughs> she told me that you can have orgasms in your heart, heartgasms. I'm like, cool, now I have to fake a heartgasm too. <laughs> Such great news for me. Uh, the last guy I tried that with, you know, I really gave it a go, and he was like, uh, I think I'm gonna call 911, I think you're dying. I was like, no, the last time I died, I was a Somalian soldier. Let me tell you that story again. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gay, and this month that's special and brave, so thank you, and no And a lot of my straight friends, when they find out that I'm gay, they're like, oh, like, you just, um, you don't look gay. Yeah, and I get a little worked up. I'm like, first of all, don't even know what the hell that means, and secondly, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know what it means. <laughs> Male coworker I've known for like two years just found out that I'm gay and he just looked at me and went, Casey, you a lesbo? I thought you was just a nerd. <laughs> Comedy is funny. I was hoping that story would get a laugh and then it did and now I'm mad. Uh, shot in the dark, any gay people here tonight? Cool, super safe space. I'm so relieved. A lot of shows I do, there's like nobody in the audience that's LGBT. But you know, like the girls are drinking, so it's like LGBT BD. <laughs> no, you're lovely. Have a nice evening. <laughs> um, a lot of my guy friends will ask me, like, oh, that you got an apartment for like dildos and sex toys and like girl videos, right? 
I'm saying I need new guy friends. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, first of all, none of your business. It's exactly weird stereotype that y'all made up. Like, just because I'm a single lesbian doesn't mean I have an apartment full of dildos and sex toys. I have a kitchen full of very versatile appliances that you'd be wise not to borrow. <laughs> But sex toys, I don't, I don't, I'm a fucking adult. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sometimes I like to wear a strap on. I'm like, yes. Occasionally, I like to wear a fake penis, but not for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I wear it to my mechanic so he's less condescending. <laughs> yeah, that's my dildo joke, and I like to think it puts a mirror up to society. You're very welcome. <laughs> Like, guys, you will never understand what it's like to be a woman at a mechanic. They just talk down to you immediately for, like, no reason. Like, last time I was at a mechanic, he was like, Casey, you seem really smart, but maybe next time come with your boyfriend or your husband or your dad or a car. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there swinging a big purple dong around and they leave you alone. <laughs> I don't know anything about Bob. I should. I'm in my 40s. I should care, but I don't. I don't know even know what I am. I, I, I swear to God, I don't know whether part of me still feels like I'm a Democrat, you know, because I really haven't accomplished anything. And then the other half is getting conservative, so those ideas are just clashing into one another. It's weird. It's like I'm Republican and Democrat on the same issue. I don't know how that happened. Like, I want to own as many guns as I want, but I don't want any of you to have them, you know? Like, I'm a responsible guy. I consider myself pro-life, but there are several people I'd like to see dead. I think we all, we all have a hit list. Come on. There's a guy you work with. If he didn't wake up tomorrow, you'd be fucking ecstatic. You know what I mean? You know who he is. Gay marriage, look, marry whoever you want. Be happy. But can we have a trade-off? Maybe, like, abolish men's gymnastics. This is disgusting. I I'm sorry but this is getting too homoerotic at this point. I mean, have you ever seen this thing finish in the TV screen uh, during the Olympics? You're like, come on, fellas. I mean, at least start wearing some sweatpants. This shit's in HD now. There's, you know, there's kids watching this stuff. It's like, I see a 65-inch V-cup coming at me on a plasma screen at primetime family hour television. It's gross. Just looking at him like, of course you're good at tumbling. You've been getting pushed down your whole life. <laughs> Why do we even have to watch this anyway? Now 51 years old. I know, where are my over 40 ladies? Over 40, go crazy, where are you? 10 drunk women pretending to be happy. All right. Yay. You look like a baby. How old are you? You're still in your 20s. Oh, you little bitch. Oh. Oh, it's like a kick in the gut. You're so cute. What's your name? Kaylee. Kaylee? Oh, you even have a little stripper name. You're so cute. Oh, I want to pinch your little cheeks, Kaylee. Enjoy being in your 20s and your 30s when you get there. When I was in my 20s and my 30s, everybody told me I'd love being in my 50s because they said you're finally comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, that's because it stretches. <laughs> Oh, Kaylee, I don't mind getting older. I don't like to be reminded that I'm getting older. That's the problem. I was walking through a mall. I went past this cosmetic store, and there was this Russian woman out front handing out free samples. But I was in a hurry, so I said, no, thank you. And she looked at me and said, it's for under eyes. You could use. That's what she said to me. You could use. I was like, hey, Svetlana. You got anything that covers a black eye? Because in about two seconds, you could use. 